Welcome back to the Fantasy Workshop. In this episode, we're going to dive right into creating miniature swamps, marshes, jungle environments, and then we're going to go right off a cliff. This time, I'm going to be talking about the marshy, swampy jungle lands of Venus, the exteriors. And all of that work started with a bunch of concept sketches that Mitch Malloy came up with. He wanted to have fungus and giant mushroom shapes take the place of the plant life. And I thought that was a cool idea, so I kind of ran with it. From there, it was all about setting up the rooms, actually going in and determining which rooms existed, what they looked like, where the player would enter, where the player would leave, where the interactive areas, the walkable areas, or the creatures. And that's work that I did myself in a series of value paintings, kind of digital sketches in Photoshop. I was going for a really Gustav Dure or um, King Kong look. I wanted each room to kind of look like a shot right out of King Kong. The sort of uh, steamy jungles with the dark foreground objects and lighter backgrounds. And this part was really more solid game design. It was about figuring out, you know, exactly how the whole game would go together. Of course, in any other game, I would just keep painting and I would have my room. But this is Jack Houston. Everything has to be modeled. So this was just the first step. Then I had to start building. The swamp came together uh, early on. It was one of the first things I worked on, and I you know, started using a lot of um, foliage that you could kind of pick up at art supply stores, little ropes for vines, a lot of uh, branches that I just gathered from outside, pebbles that you can buy at the you know, hardware store. I would kind of glue things together and you know make things sort of modular. The pieces, you know, I could put them in one position, move them around for maybe a different scene experimented with things, you know, trying to get something that kind of scaled nicely, you know, and then of course I'm going to incorporate those mushroom shapes that Mitch had come up with. So I found these really cool, you know, mushrooms that you could kind of get these dried uh, sort of scenic pieces at a, an art supply store and I just started painting them and trying to give them a more otherworldly look, you know, layering on colors, dry brushing, you know, ink washes, more dry brushing, you know, highlighting with um, I think it has kind of a, a reddish, you know, hue around the, the edges. And uh, once I got a look I really liked, I just took that design and I kind of painted all of them that way. I shot them with the scenes. I also shot them separately so that it had the elements that I could put in later in Photoshop. To light all of this, I had these Par 16s that allowed me to kind of punch in details where I wanted them. You know, I could light certain areas, um, leave certain areas in shadow. And I just shot a big variety of images. I wanted to have plenty to work with. And what I did is I would layer all of it so that I could bring up details and the dark shadows, you know, in Photoshop. And, you know, kind of bring out highlights, almost paint in highlights from other layers. It was a really powerful way to work. For this backdrop, I got lucky, I found this cool uh, turtle display at a zoo and I just you know took some pictures the fidelity wasn't quite there for you know a foreground element but it went into the background and dropped in very nicely so of course when you're doing a you know photorealistic game with miniatures I mean if you want something to move on the screen you can't just animate a flat sprite like I'd have to build something or in this case you know I have a log ripping through some vines so I, you know, just animated it in stop motion. Uh, I didn't even really have proper blue screen behind it, so I ended up just doing some roto paint stuff afterwards and color corrected it, all in After Effects. Added the dirt and dust and you know, debris kicking up as it kind of crashed onto the other side. And uh, even, I think there's a little bit of shake. I mean, this is pretty much how it's done. 
for a film. And it's a very similar process. You could almost just put Tarzan in there, you know, swinging across on a vine or something. This scene was the first that I tackled, uh, and it kind of became the blueprint for everything I did later. You're not actually seeing the water in the background yet, that's a kind of a separate element, so this isn't even really a finished scene. It was a great beginning, you know, but it was really just scratching the surface of what I could do, I and mean, this is really just the first sketch. Of course, it can't all be swamps, uh, you know, and sometimes I need rocky areas, mountains. One of the techniques that I used was foam cutting. I would just take, like, free packing foam, you know, and cut shapes in, cut stairs into, you know, the rock, like in this case, or just slice away these jagged, kind of rocky shapes. And another thing that I did a lot of was I would use these texture pieces like this. That's actually from a rock mold. These rock molds exist for the hobby train industry. You basically just throw a bunch of plaster in there and you pull out these perfect uh, little scale, very, very nicely scaled rocks and mountains that you know are just perfect to drop in. And then of course I glue those in to you know, the carved pieces and it kind of all blends together and gives me a very realistic look and you know, deliberate cut pieces here and there, and then the realistic texture out of the rock molds. And then of course I'm lighting all of it and, you know, getting the photography again, I'm sort of punching in light where I want, I'm, you know, making sure I'm picking up the highlights, making sure that I'm filling all the dark areas so that I can be really deliberate on exactly how much detail I'm going to see in those shadows, because otherwise you would really lose most of that. And of course here's the final piece, it's actually pretty different than just the miniature. I mean, it's all about creating a hybrid technique, you know, the miniature is the beginning, and then I go in and do so much work uh, to digitally paint the landscape. This was a sharper, craggier piece, I wanted the rock to be sort of dangerous looking in these stairs cut into the stone leading up to this you know temple entrance it was like something out of uh, Dungeons and Dragons like Fortress of Fangs or maybe Castle Grayskull it's all about this pulpy Conan on Venus feel that Jack Houston and the Necronauts has getting these realistic pieces that are photographed they're just elements when I'm done with the miniatures and the photography and I get all this in the Photoshop that's where the work really begins Remember that cliff I mentioned? Yeah. I was really doing well at this point of rocking and rolling, you know, I was building models, I was building the environments, I was starting to get into the sculpting, everything was working great. And for personal reasons, I decided that I had to move. I had to pick up and leave the workshop that I spent all that time building uh, and go to Oklahoma. Now I did 
think that uh, there would be a place for me to work there. There was a garage. I was supposed to be able to, you know, get a lot of work done in there. It didn't really work out that way. Uh, there were environmental conditions that just made it completely impossible, which meant that all of my tools were in storage. Um, I had no workspace, really. I couldn't model, I couldn't build things, I couldn't create environments. I certainly couldn't light or, you know, photograph anything. I kind of had my hands tied, and I didn't know how long I was going to be there. And I knew that it could be a long time, and I had to find some way to continue to work on the game, but... I didn't know what that way would be. And then something pretty amazing happened. There's this enormous lake that runs through half the city in Oklahoma City. And that lake dried up the whole thing. It was this huge dry lake bed that you could just get in and walk for, you know, miles. And it looked like some kind of other world environment, a huge, you know, swampy, disgusting wasteland that was just perfect. So I took a bunch of pictures and I got to work. When I started adding to the photography, trying to paint it into something that looked like the swampy Venus I had in mind, one thing I noticed was that the sort of dry, you know, uh, southwestern brush of Oklahoma just didn't have the same droopy, swampy, kind of mossy look that I had in mind. I had to kind of go in and draw in all of these vines and really you know, give it more character. I found that by kind of piecing a lot of the tree root and pieces together and then taking the twigs and extending them and making them look, you know, longer and more hangy, and then adding in all the, the sort of wetlands that I found around the base of the lake and the certain areas that were still you know, sort of wet. And then, of course, I put in pin blocks from the photography of the miniatures that I had you know, created earlier, the alien foliage and pieces that I had still, you know, in my library. And that kind of added to the otherworldly sort of Venus look. What I noticed is that all of it came together to just feel much more realistic and, I don't know, gritty just on a whole other level of realism that I couldn't possibly have achieved with those early pieces that I was doing just completely miniature. This was a hybrid. There were miniature pieces, there was photography, uh, more, more of a hybrid than anything else I'd made. And what I'm realizing is that the more hybrid these things are, um, the more different kinds of elements I use, the better everything looked. And this was starting to look stellar. Not only that, but it perfectly matched the concept art that I had drawn up for, for the room. This was the first room I did, and I was able to make an exact replica of what I had in mind. So at this point, I knew, okay, this is working. I'm going to go ahead and do all the rooms this way. Fine. So the cliff was an exaggeration. I mean, it wasn't too bad. In fact, I developed some new techniques that made my scenes better than ever. I finished the swamps. I started sculpting and created some of the main characters in the game. More importantly, after the long winter and almost a year in Oklahoma, a new opportunity presented itself. A way for me to move back to Houston and turn this empty room into a studio again.